Is it a report card? Lawyer Mungo and it's your man Jerry on what's going on. Bad boys, bad boys, what, what you gonna, gonna do? do? Can you dig it, suckers? I, I dug it. It's gonna be your biggest episode. We ain't even start yet. Are you ready? Yo, yo, what's going on, people? What's hey. going on, y'all, man? Welcome to the Report Card Podcast. I'm your host, Dan Diddy. And your co-host, Solo Yomingo. And it's your man, Jerry. What's going on? Yeah, man. We got five albums for y'all today. We got that uh, T. Grizzly, My Moment. We got Jesse Reyes, Kiddo. We got Mary J. Blige, Strength of a Woman. We got Young and May, Her Story. And we got Wale Shine. But before we get out, how you been this week, Mingo? Man, same old, same old. You already know. Pushing forward, thanking God, and, you know, keeping it positive. Dealing with the shop. Promoting the clothing. You already know. That's what's up with you guys. Chilling, man. Just enjoying life. Right. It might have to move that closer. Yeah, I'm chilling. You know, same old same. How was that Wild Lake concert? Man, we'll get to that. (laughs) We'll get to that. But yeah, it was was wild. It was nice. Yeah, that's what's up. Uh, I wanted to point out, man, uh, you know, Wale been doing a lot of runs. He's been doing a lot of video, talking about the album, doing a lot of interviews. Most of them have been pretty good, pretty positive, no issues. Yeah. Uh, over the weekend, also, T.I. released a little short film for Us or Else. I don't know if y'all saw it. I saw it, that video, but I didn't know he released a short film. Yeah, that video was actually part of okay, the short okay. film. It's like uh, 17 minutes. Okay. So, Dope. yeah, that's cool. It's worth watching. And uh, Nicki Minaj, man, she's paying for uh, people's graduation, man. Uh, tuition. tuition. So, uh, clap it up for that, man. Yeah, that's what's up, man. Shout out to Nikki. You fell asleep over there. <laughs> Shout out to Young A on the on, 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 the, on the keyboard. <laughs> nah, y- young Nay. Young, young Nay. Nay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah. Nikki's been paying for people's tuition, paying for people's uh, things they need for education. They said it's uh, over thirty people at this point, but nah, I think she's gonna keep going with that, man. That's cool, man. We need people like that people to uh, be leaders in the community and she's doing it for people everywhere man so shout out to Nicki Minaj man man definitely shout out to her for that and uh, y'all heard about Molly Cyrus right <laughs> she's quitting hip hop yeah yeah she, when, she when, came when, in when was she hip hop when when she was working with Mike Will and twerking and talking about she invented it and all of that stuff culture appropriating and as soon as it wasn't beneficial no more it's over now she don't she can't stand to listen to it I'm not surprised yeah, I'm not surprised either, man. We, we got to stop letting everybody in just casually, man. That's the problem with us, man. We always just gradually open our arms and just help everybody out. I just don't understand why she's trying to make that comment now based on the Because videos. she's trying to go folk country, country it said. So you got to discredit the black community, the I guess. The evidence is already there. You got all these videos of you shaking your ass and doing all this other stuff. Man, get out of here with all that. And she went to church. She got saved. Now she can't stand hip-hop. Crazy. <laughs> all right. <laughs> what, what, what else we got for news? The, uh, that's all I got, man. I know it said Young Thug was coming out later this week. Uh, well, I'll, I'll believe it when I see it. Uh, that's how, y- the- how y'all felt about the uh, Little Yachty and um, Joe Buns? I was cool with it. <laughs> you know, I mean, I, I, I think Joe is just Joe. I mean, that's all we can say about that. But I do think he had a couple uh, good points, like when he was talking about the 360 deal. How are you not going to know about your deal? What kind of deal that you're in? Joe had great points. It's just the way it was delivered. Yeah, yeah. Uh, You know, some people that may not be familiar with Joe's character is taking it as he's a grumpy old man, like right, we spoke, right. be, uh, spoke about before, like Dane mentioned. But... If you know it's just passionate, you know what I'm saying? I tend to do the same thing. I tend to get into my debates, whether it's basketball. But I notice that when you do that, you come off angry. So people just, you know what I'm saying? They, they just start calling you a hater, yeah. even though you're stating facts. Right. You know what I'm saying? They just start calling you a hater and start calling us, uh, what, mid-40s? Yeah, man, we're in our 40s now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I didn't know we grew up so quick. <laughs> man, I, I barely touched 30, man. Yo, like, I'm, I'm 28, son. <laughs> Chill out. <laughs> <laughs> they said we're in our mid-40s. <laughs> Shout out to you for tuning in, though, man. Yeah, we appreciate man. Keep the man. comments coming. We ain't mad at that, We bro. ain't mad at nothing. That's we respect opinion. all of it. Right, that's your opinion. All You're free it. to that. 
But yeah. we're also free to our opinion, and we feel like some of that music is not good music. But you know, we after watching some interviews, you know, we kind of got a different side of some of these artists. Um, speaking uh, speaking of good music, um, uh, with Machine Gun Kelly, I'm looking for it now. Machine Gun Kelly got a pretty dope song. Oh, for real? Yeah. I ain't heard enough from him in a minute. All right. Um, I'm looking for the name of the song now. Can't find it, but it's up here somewhere. Okay. But yeah, I just want to point it out, man. Uh, I got a little bit more respect, well, a lot more respect for Yachty and, and Playboy Cardi. Them some uh, cool dudes, man. They they got their head on right, but their music still sucks. Yeah, I, I just and, I just hope they really you know stay key on this business. Like if they're really serious about their business deals and all adventures, just make sure you're making the right decision, man. Did, did you see when Joe put the pressure on him? Was like, so who's better, basically, like you or, or yeah, Uzi, like. It's this friendly environment where nobody wants to really compete, and you know. Do you disagree with that? Like, I mean, do you have a problem with it? Um, it, it's on and off. If you got your cool people that you cool and you collab with or whatever, and then this, you know, it it, it, it ain't like Joe said. It ain't real. N- nobody's happy twenty four hours a day. Not everyone gets along. Right. You know what I'm saying this is why we hear so many sublimes in, in in bars, whether it's Sean shooting Kendrick's way or Kendrick shooting back or Drake shooting around. Or ducking around. Well, that's because <laughs> they all want to be considered the greatest. Yeah, and also the fact that they all supposedly peers. Also, at the same time, they're friends. So it's uh, like, let me not mess up. Like, while well, they, they respect ain't, ain't each cold. other, yeah, they, yeah, they, they yeah. respect each other. What right. each other yeah. can do. So but, they, they, you know, sometimes like you got to put the pressure on them. Something like what Kendrick did, but then they called it this. Like what Cole did to Wale, he kind of put that pressure on. You know what I'm saying, like, yo, bro, what's up? Now you better than this. Step yeah, up. I, yeah. I, I was just about. I'll save it for the shine. Right, right. We'll gotcha. get there. Gotcha. But yeah, the name of the uh, Machine Gun Kelly track is "Let You Go." Okay. Yeah, pretty dope. Yeah, y'all ready to get into it? Let's go. All right, man. T Grizzy, man. This was actually a request. I actually had wrote down what the dude's name was that requested it, but apparently I saved it on my computer and then emailed that version. But <laughs> shout out to him. I think his name is like Tyrus. His name is Tyrus or something like that. But he, uh, he's on a, he's on the comments. I seen I think I seen him. Yeah, I, I put a shout out to yeah. him on the video. Shout out to him. <laughs> uh, but Terry, um, Terry Wallace, man, he was born in Detroit, Michigan. Uh, he started out rapping when he was 11 years old. Right. Uh, he said his influences were his father and his uncle. You know, they used to rap around the neighborhood. Uh, he had a setback after he got locked up for 18 months for some robberies in uh, Michigan State University. Uh, apparently, he stole some watches and some stuff like that. Uh, After being released, you know, he recorded his first song, First Day Out, and the song went viral. You know, he ended up getting a deal with 300 through Atlantic Records, and uh, My Moment is his debut mixtape. How do you feel about My Moment? You want me to go first? Yeah. I mean, I could go first. It don't don't matter. matter. Uh, I thought it was pretty solid. I gave it an 81. It's a C. I feel his energy. I believe he just came home, right? Yeah. So uh, he seems to be happy to be out and to be trying to do something different, something better. I heard an interview from him um, where he seems to be very positive, trying to stand up, trying to be a stand-up guy for the youth. Uh, you know, not trying to mislead the the, the youngins. Um, you, you, he, got, you sure about that? Yeah, I mean, in the okay. interview, it, of course, in his music, he talks, um, <laughs> you know, from past experience and proud of, of his environment, you know, but. Um, in the interviews, what I what I see him preaching is like, you know, I think he was like, go to school, prepare yourself, do this, do that. And I'm saying like he was he was on that on that vibe. So um, also, I was pretty impressed with. Um, but then again, who, who doesn't do this nowadays? It seems like everybody's a hybrid. You know, he got flow. He harmonizes. He raps. Um, nothing really stood out. Like nothing really stood out, stood out. Um, facts, bro. <laughs> facts, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking facts, For real. brother. And nah, m- maybe real niggas. You know what I'm saying? I like, I like that. You know. Um, I feel like he could have went with either or for the intro, my moment, or first day out. I think it was like the same exact vibe that he tried on. You know, he went with acapella on my moment. It was like the intro, and he just like a snap or whatever. And then my, my first day out was like, it was like. A flip on Gucci's approach, like you know, same same kind of thing, basically. Um, he he should have just left one. He should have left my moment out or something. You know what I'm saying, and it probably went with first day out, started off like that. But um, I thought it was pretty solid. Um, 
I, I don't feel he's trash. I feel like he can... He got some talent, and I feel like the next work should be better. His next piece of work should be better. Uh, it should be more focused, and he's probably too excited. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and he didn't deliver how he should have. I go next, man. Right. Hey, uh, listening to this joint, uh, my moment, the way he opened it up, acapella snapping. I thought we were going to get something different. You know, I actually liked the way he rapped on there. It was actually pretty dope. Uh, to stay on the positive initially uh you know i like uh how many you know i like the vibe of it you know i'm not necessarily 100 percent sold on the content like mango said nothing really stood out to be perfectly honest with you it was all kind of just average music uh the song with dj mustard produced what is it county uh i i, I wasn't feeling that uh maybe he should have still stayed away from mustard and uh side nigga i actually like that song i thought that was probably one of his more solid songs but overall i just felt like there's a whole y'all have heard me say it before when there's other rappers that can do what you do but do it way better why listen to this artist you know i hope he's successful i hope he gets all the money he can but overall i, I didn't feel anything stood out i gave it a 74 c minus yeah. i thought it was average well you know that's just like uh <laughs> your opinion man facts, facts. <laughs> well yeah i'm all on the same page as you man i gave it a 73 um not cool same same cool. <laughs> same thing um you know my moment was a real dope way to open it up i thought i really set the tone for what it was about to be like you know a real some different project but you know it was all right i, I think his passion is showing though his passion for the music passion for what he does and uh he, he I, I can tell he's a real trustworthy person like you know he's really yeah, he said he didn't snitch a <laughs> hundred times on this album. I'm like, damn, nigga, I got it. You didn't snitch on your homie, shit. But yeah. th- hold on, before you continue, that uh, one song, uh, I don't know, Secrets. Yeah. Is that not snitching? I, I, he, he's basically telling you he's telling damn you near stories. what he didn't snitch he's on. He's just not saying the names. That's snitching, dog. <laughs> it's crazy. But yeah, it's dry snitching. <laughs> basically, right? right? But 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 uh, like like. Jerry on said, you know, um, you could you could definitely hear his um, passion right. and that he wants to do this and maybe uh, you know change his or a few people around him uh, their lives, you know. So um, maybe the next project we'll hear more uh, a little more. Emph- they'll put more emphasis on different sounds and um, maybe uh, some features and stuff like that. I, well, I, I think he, I think it's the producers. I see like hell of us main the main producer. Maybe if he worked with some other producers, he have a little more. Is, is that like a, another Detroit Detroit producer? I'm not sure. It, it might be like a, it's like an in-house. Yeah, this, okay. this is what I'm saying. It's like yeah. an in-house thing. This is like a mixtape, basically. Yeah, it's a mixtape. So it's like it's not an album. You know, it's something to get. He's buzzing. He's working. He's cooking. You know, so. Right. We'll wait till he put that album out. See what else he keep going with. You know what I'm saying. Right. That's all you had to say. That's good. You, you was done? Yeah, I'm good, man. All right, man, Young and May. Her <laughs> story. Katora Marino, man. She was born in Brooklyn, New York, but she grew Shout up all the over town. the place. And uh, she started out rapping at nine years old while she was living in Virginia. Uh, she settled back down in Brooklyn at 16. You know, uh, her and a couple producers were actually working regular jobs to fund, like, a studio that was around the way. Uh, you know, she started getting the buzz when uh, Dr. Boyce Watkins actually... Uh, went viral talking about one of her songs uh brooklyn and shy brooklyn chirac and uh he was talking about how you know she's tearing down the community she's kind of you know you know whatever and then you know she dropped body bag in 2004 and then she followed up with that mixtape sleepwalkers and then in 2016 she dropped Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> and uh, after, from that point on, man, she's been on. You know, she's still independent. She says she's getting a lot of calls from labels. She just hasn't decided where she's going to sign yet. But as of right now, she's still an independent artist. And uh, her story is Young M.A.'s first EP. But it's uh, her second full project, man. How you feel about it? I mean, it's seven tracks. And Ooh's the seventh one. And that's a year old now. So I would, I would say six. So, um, I don't know if I want to grade this like a full project. This is more like a, you know, like an EP, you know, like a, somewhat like a mixtape. 
And even from the way it was written, from the flows on it and the songs, you could tell they're mostly like freestyles, um, somewhat, you know what I'm saying? And I thought it was solid. I gave it a C plus at 82. You smart. <laughs> she rapping harder than a lot of dudes, you know. Um, it's crazy because <laughs> she's a female. And I get into the bars, you know. Oh and, man, so you're saying there's no females no, no, rapping no. as hard as dudes? No, no, no. I'm not saying I'm not, <laughs> I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is like, especially being from New York, she's not she's not being a hybrid. She's being a rapper. She's just giving you bars and rapping. Like everybody else is trying to be a hybrid. That maid's not doing that. Like she just rapping. Um, so I, I so on that aspect, I'm not saying she's saying the hardest shit. She's keeping up with that hard image. I'm saying she's not. Nah, I'm rapper. just saying it because you said, and it's crazy because she's a female. No, so no, I'm no saying because you know, like even some of her bars, they like, when uh, that meme we seen going around with the deep throw, like really, really, is 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 she can she really tell? With, with, with shorty deep throat, you know what I'm saying? So it's like you get into the bars and then you gotta kind of remember like, okay, she's a female, but she is rapping from a dude's point of view. You know what I'm saying? So I guess you end she's up- She's rapping from a lesbian's point of view. But it's from what the lesbian is the stud side, not the female one. You know what I'm saying? Whatever the- It's the, still a lesbian though. What's the term for that? I don't know. <laughs> I know there's a stud and uh, I don't know the other Hey, one, man, but... don't, don't have the LGBT and Q in the, hey, in listen, the comments, man. yo. <laughs> it's cool, man. We appreciate all comments. <laughs> uh, but it was more like a mixtape, like I said. Uh, there was nothing on here I disliked except that it was short. Really? Yeah, nothing in here I disliked, really. I felt like she stayed in her lane. Hot Souls, uh, pretty dope. I think um, just one of those days featuring Monica was pretty dope. Self made was cool. I like the Bonnie, that the whole Bonnie thing, like the Bonnie and Clyde thing or whatever, you know. And um, same set was cool. Nothing, it, nothing was bad on this. And ooh, of course, we already know that was that was that was good. So I feel like she should have just put a little more emphasis and worked a little harder. Maybe put four more tracks on this and call it an album, like or Fisher Joint. How you feel about it? Yeah. Um... My, my main problem with her is that I think she's too too safe with the beats. I, I think she needs to try like a little bit more. I felt like the only th beat that was like unique on here was Bonnie. And I can say that was my only one that I actually did enjoy. Uh, I gave it a 76, you know, I just thought yeah. it was average. Well, you know, that's just like uh, <laughs> your opinion, man. But you know, I'll say this, uh, she definitely has the energy she brings her heat to whatever she uh she's on so i can respect that but i think her as an artist you know i just i would want her to try something different because i just feel like hot sauce and then j-o-o-t-d and self-made just kind of like sound the same it was just with like different music in the background still had that same type of beat that she can rap to and that she can flow to that we all know that she can flow to so that's just my opinion on it, but you know, maybe you know when she finds a label and all that and she gets an album out, it might change my opinion on that. But, but to, I just thought it was average. To piggyback on what you're saying, if if I hear if I hear her start harmonizing Oh no, no, I don't mean harmonizing. Quite upset. No, I'm not saying about harmonizing, but I just kinda feel like she's just riding over the same type of beat. Like I want her to attack a song and I don't think I've heard her do that yet I mean I know she's a club type person that gets yeah. her jumping in the club and stuff like that so maybe that's the lane that she wants to stay in but I feel like she can murder a beat uh, also the fact that she's still independent she's probably not getting the best production okay you yeah. know I'm not so. buying that man hey she's young and made she could work with a lot of people right now I think y'all tiptoeing yo this shit need to work and uh <laughs> nah, I like it man now she can rap but she's not rapping nowhere near as good as the other song she's putting out. She had the Money, Power, Respect beat where she killed that joint when she just came off a break. She had a song right after that. I can't remember what it's called. And then she had another joint before that where it was kind of like a reconstructed 90s beat. And I guess that's kind of like her thing now because, you know, she just did it on just one of those days. Right. But, uh... Hot sauce is trash to me. I can't get with it. Same set. I thought that was trash. Ooh was old. Just one of those days in self-made. They were the coolest joints and Bonnie was cool. Uh, Young and May just needs to step it up, man. 
she she's too comfortable. Yeah, she's I think, not. I think that's what I was looking for. She's yeah. a little comfortable. She's too comfortable. She needs to. She does need different beats. She needs to change it up. She needs to be a little bit more diverse. I'm not saying it. She can't come hard. Like Bonnie was a little bit of change of pace. That's probably the only change of pace on here. But hot sauce and ooh, that seems like that's her same, vibe. Same lane. S- slow tempo, just rhyming lazy, using and that, and that kickback beat. Just, yeah, you know, yeah. I'm not feeling it. Uh, I know she can rap. I'm looking for more energy. Like the and she didn't even sound excited on any of these songs. No. Yeah. So I agree with that. Yeah, I think she should step it up some, man. Agree. All right, man. Jesse Reyes. Kiddo. Jesse Reyes, she was born and raised in Toronto, Ontario, Canada. Ontario. Another one. Yeah. <laughs> Both the of her factory. <laughs> Both of her parents are from Colombia. You know, uh, she's been doing music since she was three years old. She said she was inspired by the Cuban singer Celia Cruz and uh, Lucanio Favarado. I'm horrible with name pronunciations. <laughs> Google them. They'll come up. <laughs> Huge singers. Uh, but she started out singing for real, for real at eight. And uh, she didn't really feel like she was ready until she was 18 years old. You know, her father, you know, taught her how to play the guitar and then she became part of a group called The Remix Project. And then in there, she's crafted a buzz for herself working with King Louis. And that's pretty much what got her started in the limelight. Kiddo is Jesse Reyes' debut EP, man. How you feel about Kiddo? I started out, man. I thought this was dope. I gave it 86. I, I feel like, you know... She has somewhere to go in this game, like for real, because I feel like she's an attention grabber. She she really grabs your attention. Um, Shutter Island, um, Figures, and Gatekeepers was my standout. I, I really like the the uh, lyrics on Gatekeeper. I really enjoyed it. But um, yeah, I mean, it's not much I can say. I'm really looking forward to see what else she does. I just love how she grabs your attention with her music, and I feel like. She's just got real dope vocal range. She's real dope. Who do you, who do you think she sounds like? Um, like we was talking about last week, she's like a mix of BB and like Amy Winehouse. So yeah, I think it's pretty dope. Yeah, I thought it was pretty dope also. I gave it a C plus at 82. I thought it was solid. And you know this, um, man. She's definitely different. Um, she, uh, Fuck It was a perfect way to start off. Um, I believe somebody else did something similar to this, I think last week. And they started off with a similar song. Uh, Mila J, no fucks. Yeah, me, uh, yeah, 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 exactly. It was um, a little different because hers was like really soft, right, aggressive. Right, yeah. But what, what I'm what I'm saying is to let you know what kind of mood she's in, kind of you know starting off the the project. Um, I believe this mo- most of his music is you know like emotion driven. Um, she just delivered it differently. You know what I'm saying. Um, I liked how no fucks, uh, no fucks, fuck it. Um, <laughs> Starts off the joint. I like figures and I like gatekeeper and I love the uh, I love the skit, the Colombian king and queen skit. Yeah, that was pretty yeah, nice. That was pretty dope. Um, but it ain't you understood it? Yeah, of course. Yeah, cause I, I I didn't know what the hell they were. I know she, they were singing Happy Birthday. Yeah, they were singing Happy Birthday, and then uh, the mother figure or grandmother, whoever that was, was like praying for her or you know like giving a prayer. That's or pretty whatever. much what I got. Yeah. Um, it ain't it ain't too much negative to say on a on, on a six track project, you know. Um, yeah, C plus eighty two solid. Yeah, uh, hey, seven songs. I can't actually give it a number. Uh, Colombian King <laughs> Queen is a skit, you know. Yeah. Fuck it. Uh, I love like even how she's talking at the beginning, like she's setting the tone. Yeah. Of her kind of pulling up in the car and. You know, but and you know, like you said, is emotion driven, which is good because it seems like the best music comes when you're emotionally driven. You got to have some emotion behind it. Uh, Shutter Island, Figures, Gatekeepers. I love those songs. Gatekeeper is a very true song. A lot of women have to deal with that when they're in the music industry, Hollywood. And you can argue any type of business like men use their position of power to try to get sex from women. And I love the way she articulated it. I love the way it sounds. The beat is crazy. Yeah. You could kind of like hear the pain through the vocals. Shutter Island, man, that joint is crazy to me, man. It is. I, man. I couldn't really feel Blue Ribbon is a different type of vibe. And Great Ones I thought was actually really good. I, th- I gave it a B. I thought it was dope. 
and I'm really looking forward to hearing more music from her, man. Like, really looking forward because she's really dope artist. Go check man. out the video, the figures too. It's pretty dope. Yeah, she's got a video for figures. She's got a live video for figures, and she's got a video for Shutter Island and Gatekeeper. Okay, dope. dope. Yeah, pretty dope. She's actually playing the guitar on the the acoustic version on the live version for figures. Cool. I like the art cover too. That was pretty dope. What she did. Yeah. Did you go with the with the name? Yeah. Was that, yeah. What, what, what was that like? A kid with like yeah. a, a balloon or bubble gum blown up yeah, on her face? Yeah. All right, y'all. Mary J. Blige, Strength of a Woman. Jesus Christ. Real name, Mary Jane's Blige. Mary Jane Blige. She was born in, Bro- in the Bronx, New York. Shout out to the town. Anytime yeah. I say the Bronx, I know I got to <laughs> just take a pause before you know. <laughs> uh, she was born in the Bronx, but she grew up in uh, Richmond Hills, Georgia, and right. Yonkers, New York. I didn't actually know wow, that. I didn't know that either. Yeah. yeah. You know, she said she saw a lot of women being abused growing up. You know, it kind of led to how she carries stuff as as a younger adult at first. Uh, she dropped out of high school in her junior year, and she uh, started singing in a group called Pride. It was kind of short-lived. But uh, she uh, recorded a demo, a cover of her singing Anita's Baker, Caught Up in a Rapture. And her dad, her mom's boyfriend, took the song to an A&R at... Uh, what record label was that? Uptown. Uptown Records, and he got her a record label. I uh, got her a record deal. Actually, he wasn't a. Uh, Andre Harrell was actually about to not sign her. Crazy. But Heavy wow. D was like, yo, you need to sign her. And they assigned her to Puffy. Hmm. You know, Puffy was just off the success of Jodeci. They gave her to Puffy to try to produce her music. He wanted her to take the 90s R&B route, but a little bit harder. Kind of like what Jodeci did, you know, tomboyish. Hat to the back, glasses, you know. It ended up working out, you know. Now she's regarded as the queen of hip hop soul. Strength and Strength of a Woman is Mary J. Blige's thirteenth album. Woo. Man, I'm Crazy. sorry, man. 90, <laughs> this was amazing, man. I gave it a 92. We on the same page. I gave it a 92 also. That's what's up. I gave it a 92. <laughs> That's crazy. That's Yo, what's she, up. she's mastered the the broken heart sound, like. It, 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 it sucks that after no more drama, there was more drama. Yeah. But, but it's just life, you know? That's just the reality of life, you know? It's like, you can, nobody's perfect. Nobody's living a perfect life, you right. know? So, um, man, but dude, dude really fucked up, man. Because that's a, this is the last person you want to give ammo to go make an album about heartbroken. Like, you know what I'm saying? As like, soon who, as I heard about it, I'm like, her next album is about to be right. just hit. Man. Like, for real. And Love Yourself. Uh, shout out to Kanye. He did his thing on that. The song on the song itself was a good song. Um, he could have ruined it, and he didn't. So, <laughs> shout out to him. Um, Think of it. <laughs> Think of it was an amazing song. Um, it's this whole, uh, like I said earlier with... Um, that artist we just did her Jesse yeah um is emotion driven she just um delivered it differently um this one is you already know Mary is full of emotion um she just de- delivered it in a Mary J way um set me free was um was dope also it's me I like the collab on glow up um shout out to Missy Quavo, Cali. I was surprised on that. That was one of those tracks I just, I didn't look at the track list and I'm like, that's Missy? Right. That's Quavo? And I was just like, right. damn. <laughs> right. Man, shout out to Quavo. Quavo fits in a lot of different um, ranges in yeah. this game, man. He's all over the place. Um, You plus me. You know, um, and then and then she kind of like switched up the pace a little bit with Find, find Love, which, you know, I thought it was pretty dope, man. How y'all feel about it? Yo, I just appreciate the way that she approaches her music. Uh, she could she could have chose to go on any route, like, you know, just make a depressing album, I would say. But, you know, I felt like she turned her struggle into some good music, and she kind of, like, took herself to new heights at the same time. So that's what I really respect, respect about her. Um, my favorite song on here has to be You Plus Me. I just love that song, the whole arrangement of it. I just think it's great. Set Me Free. I just, it's so, what was the chorus? Um, There's a special place in hell for you. It's just kind of funny how she said that so sweet and just so subtle. Like, you know, you can really feel it from her. Yeah. <laughs> and um, 
Glow Up, I, I thought it was a really dope collaboration. You know, I think that was put together really well. And I really enjoyed Smile. I thought Smile was pretty dope too. But I just really appreciate, you know, she could have gave us a sad, mopey, drama-filled album. Well, she but she did, but she strengthened the woman, hence the title, you know, at the same time. And I really think she was dope for doing that. Well, my fault for Kenya, but, ahead. you know, it, it's just... Not to, uh, you know, this is probably the first Mary J project that I've listened to in full. I've, I've been familiar with hits, of course, and with yeah. singles. Um, like, how good was the album before this when she was happily married? Wasn't it the London Sessions? It was some London yeah. sound, but... Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, the Sessions. I didn't hear the Sessions album. But I will say that I haven't really been feeling Mary since... Right. Uh, yeah. What, I, I, I want to say the album was... Growing Pains Yeah I can say that too And and the last Really really good album She had was The Breakthrough Yeah And and in my opinion You know you have Share My World My Life What's the 411 The Breakthrough And now you have this As far as her like Really good albums Right Uh, Mary has Like I said She hasn't really made Really great work And since The Breakthrough And this Took me back To that feeling That you heard when you heard her doing the I'm going downs and and the, you know seven days and like all of those great great songs right. like it's, it sucks to say like I, I want her to be happy but her best music comes Come, when she's not right yeah. that's what I was like, like, you know what I'm it, it sucks to have no more drama there was I'm saying like but you know yeah but uh shout out to Trey songs man he helped her write uh it's me I thought that was actually pretty cool okay, that's um sick. Thick of it was great. I really, 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 really like Indestructible. Yeah. Cause that's some real shit. Like, y'all, y'all need to listen to that song and listen to the words. Cause a lot of y'all that can't find love, y'all probably be able to find it after you listen to that song. <laughs> that, that's some real shit. I actually like what Quavo and Missy did on uh, Glow Up. That was actually cool. Khaled was not needed. I don't know why you got him screaming on the song, Mary. That was not cool. You about to well, say he probably something? made the collab happen. He probably he got probably did, together. but we don't need him screaming on nothing. <laughs> Real talk. Like <laughs> I thought it was an amazing way to start off the tr- uh, the project with "Love Yourself." Yeah, "Love Yourself" yeah. was hard. The yeah. beats hard. Yo, uh, DJ Carpenter and Bam, they did a good job of making some of these songs sound pretty damn hard. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I like uh, "Find Find uh, so Find right. the Love." Uh, Lamb actually uh, produced that, if I'm not mistaken. I didn't even know who he was until I actually Googled him, man. But he did Countdown for Beyonce. He did uh, Monica, some of Monica's stuff. He did some of Jasmine Sullivan's stuff. Uh, man, he, he's, he's got a lot of hits gotcha. under his belt. And uh, that dude did a hell of a job with that, helping uh, with help from Missy. Uh, K. Trinata, man. This yeah. dude's been everywhere, everywhere this man. year. And he did his thing once again. I don't know where this dude came. He's probably from Canada, <laughs> for all we know. But, uh, you know, I thought that was pretty good. And Mary, even though she doesn't actually sound overly too sad on this album. Yeah. Surprisingly. like yeah. Kind of like you said, like, it's, it's slow, slow, get over your... Like, Tyree said it perfectly, man. Beyonce's album was called Lemonade. This should be called Hennessy. <laughs> because it literally is like a harder version of Lemonade. Crazy. You know what I'm saying? Completely different sound because Beyonce makes dance music. She Mary had a couple of up-tempo songs, but for the most part, she kept it slow. Much she soul. said the whole album actually had a completely different direction when she was starting to go through the messy breakup. But once the divorce started coming in, she changed the whole direction of the album. And now we got Hennessy. <laughs> I mean, strength of a woman. <laughs> All right, y'all. Wale. Sean. Onuba Wale, man. Well. Yeah. Well. Well. <laughs> How you feel about it, Mingo? Man, this joint was dope, man. I gave it an 87. B. Yo, man, you gave this shit an 87, dog. Yeah, man. I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> What you mean? Got it. <laughs> what you mean? Got at first, it. at first listen, I was like, "What the fuck? Like, what is this?" I'm saying, uh, I don't know. I think you liked my comment or you said something about yeah. it. I was like, "What direction is he going with this? Like, what the fuck?" But uh, I enjoyed most of the album except for the two Caribbean songs, and they're not bad songs. They are they're not actually- Caribbean songs. They are Naja songs. 
Okay. Yeah. We, we'll, we'll I, I had to actually go <laughs> listen to a Naja playlist, and I don't even know if I'm saying that right. Well, you you know what I'm saying? That whole vibe, that whole same sound that. I feel yeah, but everybody. that's been, not the same that's, sound. That's been mistaken. That's been. Cause he had a rant with somebody over the week yeah, yeah. about that. I'm, I'm, I'm just yeah. trying to make sure we sound informed here. <laughs> <laughs> they were, they were, they were good songs. I just, that's not what I want to hear from Wallet. Now, um, stand up for me. Uh, but, but he's African, dude. I mean, that's cool. That, that's so if he wants to use the African sound, why can't he use it? I, I didn't say he can't. That's not what I want to hear from. That's why those are the lead songs I liked on this, on this joint. You know what I'm saying? But okay. Um. DNA was dope. I, I like how you flipped that because as soon as I read DNA, I was like, no, you, you, you couldn't have done this a week after Kendrick. Like, you, I know you didn't do this. Here, so. But I like the flip on that. It's good DNA advice. I thought that was pretty dope. Uh, mathematics, I thought that was uh, Drizzy's flow. I think he used Drake's flow, but it was pretty dope. Um, Columbia Heights, I thought that was also dope. Um, the Spanish, it's, yo, dude body that joint. I know. If, I don't know if y'all understand. No, I read the I, translation. I you read the translation. Yeah, he did. You know what I'm saying? Um, I felt like that was a good song to have uh, two chains on or something or someone like a good feature, like you know. Um, yeah, the only two songs I really—they're not bad songs. I just didn't really enjoy them from Wale. Was uh, "My Love" and "Fine Girl," right? Man. And then uh, r- uh, "Running Back" is, is I liked. Featuring Wayne, he did his thing. Um, I like um, Scarface, Rose, and Gotti. I like that vibe. Then he brought some of his uh, go go uh, music vibes um, on Fashion Week with G Easy, right? You know what I'm saying? That was pretty A little dope. Bit, yeah. Um, you know, I a like- fun fact about that uh, you know that sample is from Frank Ocean? I didn't know that. Nah. It's um, Love Crimes. I didn't know that until yesterday. I'll probably catch it next time I listen to him. <laughs> but CC White was pretty dope. Um, and then at first I didn't know how to take the the fish and grits uh, with Travis Scott. I didn't know how to take that, but um, it's okay. It's enjoyable. And I think the joint with him and Chris Brown is gonna be on the radio pretty soon. I go. You can go last. Since right, you went to ahead. the concert, you got more info. <laughs> hey. uh... <laughs> My favorite songs on here is Thank God and Sean. First and last song. Favorite two songs on the album. Uh, I did not like Mathematics whatsoever. Hey, by the way, I'm a huge Wale fan. I got every fucking Wale project. I bought every single one except for this one. I'm not saying I'm not going to. (laughs) (laughs) But at the moment, probably not. Look, uh, Running Back kind of comes out of left field in context with the rest of the album. It seemed like he didn't have a cohesive idea of what he wanted to do it was a weird change of pace i feel like you know scarface rose and Gotti would have been next yeah better yeah, off I next agree. yeah and speaking of scarface rose and Gotti, that's one of my other favorite songs on the album i love the line about uh morris dane is prom he's out now i got the time like morris the dane is prom yeah, yeah so part of me jerome get the uh you know get the mirror quick because yeah. that that's the thing that tom the group used to do like morris day would you know, he'd get Jerome to hold up the mirror and Morris Day always check himself in the mirror and shit. So I thought that was actually a dope line. Uh, they did it on um, Purple Rain, too. Okay. Because cause Jerome would always help Morris Day out. Th- he threw the girl in the trash can and stuff like that. <laughs> <laughs> Jerome was like his henchman. <laughs> so, and uh, another thing on uh, Thank God, I love the line about a couple haters. Yeah, uh, shout yeah. out to Enzo Moore. That joint was kind of dope. Uh, Fashion Week, I thought that beat was dope but i didn't like either of the verses on it uh he said that the last eight bars of his verse was like an ode to tupac uh what's your phone number the second verse of what's your phone number tupac i thought that was kind of dope uh cc white i like the idea i don't like the song really um fish and grits i like the lyrics he's rapping i'm not a fan of the beat it, it like he said it's literally post rodeo it's like something that probably sounded right on rodeo um my pyt was cool i mean i mean it is what it is you know it it, it was kind of like a cheap uh radio song i guess you could say uh and i really wish he had put that that shine season yeah on this project but he really didn't 
Uh, I gave it a 79, a C. I thought it was solid. Bye, Felicia. I thought this was <laughs> arguably Wale's worst album as far as like this, cohesive. This is coming from a Wale fan. Right. Oh, yeah. Geez. So it, 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 the expectation is way higher. Now, nah, because like Gifted, I like Gifted. Mm-hmm. Like a lot of people say that's his worst album. I feel like it's cohesive though. I don't feel like this is cohesive. It didn't feel like he had it all in mind. Because like Running Back throws it up. So, you know, as soon as you get a vibe, you know, and actually uh, about the two Naja songs, I actually do like Fine Girl. My love, I'm not really sold on that. I thought it was kind of corny. I could have done without him. I, I could have done with uh, Meek Mill, Rose, and Wale track. I don't want that on Wale's album. I disagree. Not, not right not? now. I, I've not? got it. I've gotten it a lot of times. And if I want to hear that, I can go listen to Maybach music but, album. But it's time to bring that back around. He nah, said, I, he, he and said. another thing, the Chris Brown song is completely overrated. Normally, if Wale does a song with somebody like Usher, Matrimony, that shit is crazy. You know, Bad with Tierra Thomas or Rihanna, either one. Crazy. Lotus Firebomb with Miguel, crazy. This joint with Chris Brown, not so crazy. I, I was actually disappointed. I saw it, and I was like, oh, this is about to be a smash. I listened to it, I was like, what the fuck was that? Yeah. And I love Chris Brown and Wallet. I, I think it's going to be on the radio pretty soon. It will. Y'all done? Yo, man. I'm a big Wale fan. <laughs> I've been for years. I remember listening to, uh, what was it, mixtape about nothing for the first time. That's history. But anyways, um, I gave this an 86, man. I thought it was pretty dope. I ain't scared of you, motherfucker. <laughs> and, um, you know, I just came away with the depression. You know, I had the... Uh, Liberty to go to this concert on Friday night it was hot. We really set the tone. And but what I got from the vibe before, uh, I had the opportunity to listen on the radio on Thursday while he was promoting the show for Friday. And I really felt like you know he, he's at a different place in his life. I don't know what's going on with him, but I really felt that the show Friday really rejuvenated his spirit because I just feel like there's some stuff that we don't know that's going on. Um, with that being said, I really feel like shine is just an album of him enjoying life and where he is right now in life and i really think this was just an album to tour with and i don't think that's a bad thing and i think you know that's why the structure of this album is just so everywhere because this was just stuff that he just was just felt and he wanted to go and record and everything like that and i think it really translated well to that environment now, I'm not saying that you should go to a concert to really love this album or nothing like that, but I'm just saying, like, I really feel his spirit right now, like, where he is. I think he's just trying to be really um, grateful of where he's at, grateful of his daughter and everything like that. And I, I just really, like, you know, I was one of those people that was kind of like, when he signed with Ross, I'm like, oh, damn, what's going to happen? And it's like, you know, with this album, I'm like, okay, I can't, I, I've, I've learned not to be that way anymore. I don't really judge him as harshly as I used to because Wale go be Wale. At the end of the day, he go do what he want. He go make the music he go want to make. And it's fine with that. And I could say the songs I didn't like, I ain't like Running Back as well. I thought it kind of threw off the album. Uh, mathematics, it, it was all right. I, I could dealt with without that. But uh, other than uh, Different than Mingo, man, I, I enjoyed the Naja joints, man. Like, I, I thought that was Wale's comfort zone. I think he can do that. I know he hasn't done it before, but I think he really excels in that. And I, I wouldn't mind if he made a whole album like that. I would enjoy it. I, I believe he flirted with the sound before he even had hair. When he had, yeah. uh, you know, low cut, I believe he flirted with the sound, but that's before he was even known. Um, he tried to bring his, you know, his home culture. And I, I understand all that. And I'm for I've that. never heard that before. Like... I've heard every Wale project, the Ninth Wonder project. I've never heard anything like My Love or he's Fine been, Girl. He's before. been featured on some things here yeah. and there, but not on his own project. Yeah, that, that's yeah. what I'm. I probably heard him on the feature. So yeah. I know I seen a video when he had a really low cut and it, the, the beats was using some kind of drums that was similar. But right. um, like I said, they were good songs. It's just you know, it, it they sound uh, like you guys just. Um, educated me on um it sounds very similar to the caribbean sound everybody in caribbean is technically from africa right right so, so i mean yeah. you know the, the sound the drums is very similar and, and the sound is very similar the vibe is very similar so when we get in like next week we might do kid ink right i didn't have kid ink up there but 
Okay, but when we get to him or what, I, I, he's ha he has a couple of similar sounds on his on his project. You know, it seems like everyone is attacking that sound. So, um, not that there wasn't good songs. I just yeah. didn't, didn't want to hear that from Wale. Yeah. You know? I think uh, another thing, I, I didn't like Columbia Heights at first, but I really I enjoyed that. <laughs> like, after listening to it a lot, I just really enjoy it. And, like, I found out the artist that's uh, Jay Bal Bal I don't know, it's Belvin or Balvin. Balvin. Yeah. He's actually from Columbia. So, I guess he played off that contrast. He's from Columbia, D.C. Right. And he's from actual Columbia. So, I thought that was pretty dope. But yeah, overall, I, I, I really enjoy this album. Like, I was telling you a couple weeks before, I expected him to do an album like this. I knew it wasn't going to be like the deep Wale, metaphorically Wale. I mean, we still got metaphors in here and everything like that. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, you know, we that. just didn't get like album about nothing Wale. Yeah, you got a couple of double entendres. And, yeah, like, Wale is always good for that. Yeah. But I felt like he held back on it a little bit for a more friendly vibe. Yeah. yeah. What song was it that he went all poetry on? What's it? Here? DNA. DNA. Yeah, DNA. That yeah. shit was hard, bro. Cause yeah. He didn't rap. rap. I, didn't, I didn't like how he sung on it. I do love, you I should, love the poetry. You should have yeah, seen him at the concert. Nah, no, no. Lazy. You should have seen him at the concert. He was like, y'all know I can't sing, right? But if y'all know the words, I know y'all gonna sing with me. So y'all gonna make me sound better. <laughs> <laughs> I was I mean I felt I felt real good about that I just feel like he in a good place right now man it's like I respect Wale and the person he is he ain't really give us just a whack album he just really gave us an album that, about having fun so I'm cool with that now when he dropped his Go-Go album and all that stuff I'll be interested to see how he go with that so yeah you, you know you gotta to be technical with these people I said it's his worst album but I still gave it a 79 I just want to point that out because <laughs> that's still pretty good for somebody like Wale if yeah. that's his worst album yeah you how, know what I'm saying how do you feel I know we was talking lightly about this but after Groundhog's Day and all that I, I really thought that's what we were going to get uh, I went back and listened to Sunset on Summer um, on uh, Sunset in Summer I think that's Summer what it's called Sunset. Summer on Sunset and uh, I actually liked that joint I was like why did not listen to it all the way through the first time I felt like it was different it was a different vibe for Wale, but I actually enjoyed it a lot. I'm surprised he didn't use some of those cuts because some of them were really dope. Right. Uh, and I actually, and of course, I went back and I listened to all Wale's projects. And I was just, just to make sure I felt like this was the worst. Okay. And before I actually said that. And I felt like it was the worst. I love the Knife Wonder project. I love Mixtape About None, album About None, Forlorn. He said this is closer to Forlorn. I, I don't agree with that, but yeah. I, I can see what he's saying. Yeah. Because of the wide spectrum that he hit with Falorn. Right, right. You know, but you know, I mean, hey, it is what it is. Wale is still one of my favorite rappers, so still out rap a lot of people. Yeah. And I and that's another thing. He made a comment about that. He really don't give a fuck about where he ranks at. He knows where he is. I, and that's I was happy to hear him say that. Cause I don't want him I, think, I care where he's ranked at. Well, I'm just saying, like J. Cole made him really realize that you ain't got to worry about that stuff but he's a better rapper than j cole i'll say it i think wale's a better rapper than j cole i don't think he delivers better than j cole j cole just delivers aggressively in certain instances wale doesn't emphasize his lyrics you know what i'm saying yeah, like so a, lot, a lot of things wale says goes yeah it goes over, over people's yeah. head yeah but i can open up way more wale songs where he actually got bars in there than j cole j cole like dude like dude I hate saying, doing I that because like, I, I sound yeah, like I'm discrediting yeah, J. Yeah, Cole I'm not trying to do that I love J. Cole J. Cole can really spit I think they'll talk the same way too no like, like it's like the conversation I had with dude I hope he's watching um, when he said that Big Sean is more complex than Wale oh fuck no, yeah, no now now, no, now I will no. say that Big Sean is better at flows yeah like like mastering the different flows like Big Sean that's his great pocket right. Big Sean has a <laughs> whack album you heard, you heard. He, he, he has a totally whack album with Hall of Fame nigga said Sean finds a flow for anything oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah I'm pretty sure you can throw like a Mustang commercial on and he can figure out a way to rap to that motherfucker like real talk Big Sean is that talented but when it comes to like this new crop of rappers like Drake is disqualified at this point he doesn't rap enough for me to even consider him but right now Kendrick is the best rapper out of, out of that class Kendrick is the best but after you get past Kendrick if we're gonna go with albums, I'm putting J. Cole next. If we're not going albums, I'm gonna put Wale after Kendrick. How, how do you but feel? But lyrically, Wale is better than Kendrick. 
How do you feel about the promotion of this album? You think that it didn't get promoted enough? I don't know, man. Maybe he did something to the label. Wale rubs a lot of people the wrong way. You said and lyrically, Wale is better than Kendrick or Wale is better Wale's than better. Yeah, lyrically, out of that class, Wale is the best lyrical rapper. You know, Kendrick doesn't really have a lot of quotables. He, he just, he he's just great at everything else. <laughs> he just yeah. doesn't have a lot of quotables. You know what I'm saying? Like, quote, quote a Kendrick bar right now. I can't. You I'm, can't I'm do not it. in tune right now. <laughs> I'm but just saying. Some shit that he said on that joint when he was like. On damn, on yeah. damn. But like, even like when you quote stuff from damn, it's more so the flow. When you listen to DNA, there's no real bars in there that you're like, cra- it's just the flow. Kendrick is great there's at some, that. There's some bars in there though. No, nah, I'm just saying like yeah. that's going to blow you away. But they yeah. go with the flow. Yeah. They ha- they go with the flow. So like it's like Sean though. It's like Sean like we said Sean g- don't got a lot of quotables either No, 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 no. You- now Sean got a lot of quotables. Yeah, but I'm not going to say it, that Sean got a lot. They don't sound the same when you say Sean bars. If you spit them then when Sean spit them. Now that's what he was saying about Kendrick. That's that was right. Ke- that was what Sean said about Kendrick like when you recite it back it don't sound high. It's only hot when you say it how he said it. But yeah. it's the same thing with Sean. Nah. I think Sean, so. You Sean got bars. Yeah, he do, but it's like, he got the cool way to say it. When we say him, they be like, <laughs> that sounded normal as shit. You know what I'm saying? That sounded simple. I, I, get, what, I get what he's saying. I, I kind of understand. But but Sean gives it his flip to it. He has that little swag to it. You know what I'm saying? It's s- somewhat like Kendrick too. You know what I'm saying? We can't spit the Kendrick rhymes and... They don't sound hard, but when Kendrick flips it, how he flips it with his and his voice, you know what I'm saying, it sounds sounds hard. <laughs> yeah, ain't, you ain't gonna get no argument out of me, man. <laughs> that, that's it with Wale. Yeah, man. Yeah, we all gave our grade, right? Yeah. Cool. All what right, man. Next week. That has been this week's episode of Report Card. Uh, check us next week, man. We got Logic. Everybody, I could review it right now, but you know, Man. I don't know if me gonna listen to it. No, nah, not yet. Uh, <laughs> Russ, there's really a wolf. We got Brother Ali, uh, all beautiful in the world life. That was a request, and then we got Pride Lover Boy. That was a request as well. Um, you know, uh, find us on Instagram. I mean, fuck Instagram. Follow us on Twitter because that seems what y'all motherfuckers like the most. <laughs> at TRC Podcast Live. Instagram is at TRC Podcast. Uh, y'all like YouTube apparently. Subscribe to the channel. Thumbs up thumbs down say some hateful shit call us 50 years old <laughs> don't really care uh you know subscribe on soundcloud uh we're on apple music google music play tune in Libsyn, uh iheart radio anywhere you can find a fucking podcast google, google music it. play yeah just right. google the report card podcast man. right right yeah man shout out to my lady again it's my special tea coming really soon uh we should be open by middle of this month end of the month something about that just pushing trying to get it open um shout out to the clothing check us out at so loyal clothing inc on instagram um any moves in and out of georgia hit us up at honest movers 29 at gmail.com um you're interested in beer grooming check out scotchporter.com for any beer grooming they got uh hair and facial now um what else Yo, man, check me out at Ambitious Image. Uh, be on the lookout. My baby got uh, her channel starting soon at Elysian Beauty Queen. Uh, man, if you're in the Tucker area, check out uh, My Beauty my, uh, Beauty Supply. Uh, support black-owned businesses, man, and just keep on going. Yeah, do that shit, definitely. Definitely. Oh, yeah, shout-out to my cousin and them on Unofficial Commentators. Check them out on Facebook and YouTube also for everything sports. That's it. Yeah, man, I, I really ain't got shit else to talk about. I don't give a fuck about the playoffs. Call me when the Warriors and the, and the Cavs is playing. <laughs> it, it's, it's about to be lit in a little bit. I think next round is going to pick up. Right now, the most interesting series are the Spurs and the Rockets and Washington and Boston. It don't matter. The Warriors is going. It's, it's, it's yo, right now, yo, basketball is a waste of fucking time watching the play. We know <laughs> it's going to be the Cavs versus, is it going to be Cavs versus Warriors? I know the, I know the I, Cavs. I told him, I told him I want a surprise for the East. It's not but, happening. But I, I know that's not going to happen. The league want it. That's what the people want. People want to see KD and Steph versus LeBron. If LeBron win, they going to joke the shit out of KD. Yeah, and they going to trash him. And then if uh, LeBron lose, they going to shit on KD still. And then they still going to shit on LeBron. So Yeah, so either way, they going to have Whoever wins or loses, KD and LeBron going to get shit on. The internet wins regardless. Yeah. 
<laughs> that I'm, shit is undefeated. Jordan faces on somebody. On everybody. Oh man, what's all over the trophy I, and everything? I, I need to know y'all opinion on Levar Ball, man. Oh, you know what? I'm glad you brought oh, yeah, that man. shit up, man. Too. I do want to point out the fact that I do appreciate the fact Shout out that to him. he said, "Fuck Nike, fuck Under Armour, I'm gonna do this shit myself, brother." Your shoes are a little overpriced, and uh, somebody put a post picture of of them with a Nike symbol on it. And for some reason, they look like 100% better. I was like, God damn, a check make that much of a difference? Am I that much of a slave you to know, Nike? Wear, wear that brainwash, though. No, no, but the check, like, because there's made, nothing made, on the I side of the it. shoe. Yeah, is I empty. See, I seen yeah. it. Even it the Under Armour difference. logo made yeah. it look better. All, all of them. They, they really look like some kind of Kobe's. Yeah, they really yeah. kind of look like some kind of Kobe's. But there's they, no they, way they, I'm paying $500 for them. No, hell yeah. That's, that, that, that's the thing that tripped out. I don't knock him for what he's doing. Yeah, he's playing the game. Yeah, he's exploiting certain things. But, bruh, like, if he, if he's not going to do it for his kids, who is? You know what I'm saying? So, I don't knock him for pushing it, how he's pushing it, whatever. Whoever has it to go pay it, go ahead and pay it if that's what you want to do. I guess I'm not baller enough, man. Right, yeah, we're not yeah, baller enough. <laughs> it's not, it's not, it's not made for us, though. It's not made for us, as he said. It. So, he can't feel no way when people like us can't afford him. Or... Don't even seem interested in them. I'd rather you know what go what buy some Adidas anyway right now. They they making some really dope running shoes, man. Yo, uh, the EQTs, the N N NMDs. Did you know that all of those were made by people that worked at Nike that left Nike and went to Adidas? That's what I heard yeah. too. Yeah. I, thought, yeah. I thought that was funny. That, was that's like, how it goes. In a couple years, those people leave Adidas and go somewhere else. They they. Man, I feel it bad still kind of comes back to Kanye moving yeah, away. He's, right. I, I hated to say he got that much power, but he really did shift away. Right, he right, did. Right. Um, but it sucks because that's the way that 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 you yeah, heard that background. I heard some of my headphones. But anyway, um, it sucks that that's the way that things work, man. Shout out to B White. That's why he can't really get in. Like even with his dope designs, or people have dope designs because nobody gets fired. Nobody really loses jobs. They just move over to the next company, you know. Um, I, they had like a competition, a soul something competition where people, um, you know, turn in their designs and then they pick a winner or whatever. You vote these rounds. I think B lost in the second round. I forgot how many rounds it was, but um, the sneaker that won, right? They made a few amounts of, of, of the sneaker. They sold for like 195 or something, a stupid price also. Um, and they got it in a few stores. I think like limited foot lockers or something like that. But then a Kobe sneaker came out and it had a lot of those concepts. I mean, when you sign up for a contest like that, you're signing up to get your design. It, it tells you in the right. in the thing, like yeah. you know, if if your design ends up somewhere, you're, you're waiving the rights, basically. Right. So these people, what, what they do is they use your your websites, your Instagram, wherever you're uploading designs or samples at. I, I guess some rappers would do the same when they hear somebody flow a certain way on a SoundCloud somewhere, then they go use that flow. I don't, I don't think people doing that, man. That was the thing they were saying Kendrick did. I don't believe it, man. Yeah. I mean, I don't think Kendrick did it, but I believe, I believe it's possible. I think you said something about... Um, Fat Joe? But no, no, we, uh, Jeezy in the studio, like, he, he sometimes will hit, like, wouldn't know really what to write and be like, yo, just throw on yeah, some right other shit. Yeah. And then after he gets a couple, you know, oh, all right, then then he'll go back in, you know, something. But that's understandable, you know, I'm not saying, you know, I mean, Jay and Fab did it with um, The Money Goes, reference I mean, that, no, that's that, different. He's selling the track. Route. Yeah, right. that's different. Um, but yeah, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. That's it? That's yeah. it, man. All right, man. On that note, peace. Peace.